Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our introduction to chapter four. Um, in this chapter, we're going to see a lot of um, a lot of new ways to draw and to interpret um, our first functional group, the alkane. Um, with the alkane and the cycloalkane, what we are looking at are hydrocarbons, um, specifically hydrocarbons that are all sp3 hybridized, fully saturated. They're going to be everywhere. So hopefully we'll be able to look at our hydrocarbons that are fully saturated, um, such as ethane or butane. We can think about cyclohexane. We'll be able to do a bit of naming. Um, these are saturated because there are only single bonds. So if you've heard the idea of a saturated fat, that means that it's a hydrocarbon that has all single bonds. An unsaturated molecule is one where we have a double bond, a pi bond, or even a triple bond, two pi bonds. And so with unsaturated things, um, we'll start incorporating uh, degrees of unsaturation where there's not as many hydrogens as possible, right? We have double bonds or triple bonds um, between different carbon atoms. We're going to see all the hydrocarbons, um, specifically alkanes, this chapter. So we're going to be dealing with the saturated uh, hydrocarbons. Um, but we will start branching off once we get into reactivity. We'll start using the, the unsaturated hydrocarbons. Just to present um, some ideas of some common names. We use a lot of common names in chemistry pretty much because um, organic chemistry is relatively new when we think about the depth of science and, and the history of science. Um, many organic compounds have common names. Formic acid, this first one on the left, um, ants actually uh, produce formic acid within them. And so uh, when this compound was isolated from ants, they named it formic acid because of the Latin word for ants, which is formica. Um, morphine, I love the, the explanation for morphine here. Uh, morphine, the painkiller is named after the Greek god of dreams, Morpheus. Um, so we can start to see how uh, the influence is either historical or Latin. Um, barbituric acid was uh, named after the guy's wife. Like, how cool is that? Um, very, very romantic to name a compound after your loved one. Excellent. We are going to be using the IUPAC uh, nomenclature of alkenes. Again, IUPAC is a systematic way of naming. You might have heard IUPAC. Um, back in the day um, in general chemistry when you were learning naming of some ionic and covalent compounds. Now for organic compounds, naming is a little bit different um, because we are dealing with hydrocarbons, because we want to make sure that this rule, this system of naming covers every imaginable type of compound, we're going to be doing um, a couple of other things. Now, typically when we look at some sort of an organic molecule, we got some branching, maybe we have a couple of things coming off. So looking at this skeletal structure, where do we even start with naming? I guess we could number, right? And that's the first thing that we would wanna do is find the longest parent chain. Now from our parents come offspring, right? That's what we're going to be calling substituents, things that are branching off of the parent chain. And we have to locate where those substituents are. So for me, I'm just going to quickly find that longest parent chain here. I'm numbering it just to be able to make sure, okay, is it nine? If I did six, what about seven, eight? No, that's not the longest. Six, seven, no, that's not the longest. Um, starting down here wouldn't be the longest. So trying to find the longest parent chain, I've done it left to right. So this one's a little bit more straightforward. It doesn't always have to be left to right. And then finding substituents, finding carbons that I haven't numbered that are branching off. I've got that two carbon group and the one carbon. Here's another one carbon. Here's another one carbon. Those are substituents. And where they are located 
means where are they on the actual parent chain? This one's on carbon number three, this one's on carbon number five, these are on carbon number six. And that will be how we start to name this compound. We're really going to be breaking apart um, the molecule that we have, the hydrocarbon specifically, and being able to piece together different portions of it. What's really important is that we do this in a systematic way. We always want to find the longest carbon chain, we want to find subs the substituents, and we want to number the substituents so that we can actually uh, converse and communicate the location of those. So those three steps are going to be the overarching theme that we'll see now in a whole bunch of examples. When we select a parent chain, what's really important is that we know how to name that parent chain. It's going to be the foundation of our nomenclature, the foundation of the name of the molecule. So we look to this chart uh, knowing if it's one, two, three, all the way up to 100 carbons, we can look at that and say that the parent is going to be either a meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, however, whatever we have in terms of the number. Now, I do want you to know one through 10. 11 through 100 is uh, something that's in your textbook. I will not present one through 100, or 11 through 100. I'll only stick with one through 10. Um, we can get into some really crazy structures. Um, the parent is the prefix, and it's the root of knowing how many carbons there are. So one is always meth, two is eth, three is prop, all the way down to 10, which is dec. If we are dealing with an alkane, again, an alkane is going to be where we start um, our functional groups. Um, it is going to be a fully saturated hydrocarbon. Generically, the alkane has the formula C to whatever value N, H to the 2N plus 2. Um, so if you have five carbons, H would be 5 times 2, which is 10 plus two, 12. Let's just get some um, of these structures out on, on my board. And I wanna kind of give us not one that is tricky, but one that is maybe a little bit harder to find the longest parent chain for. So here's this guy. Now, when trying to find the longest parent chain, what we wanna be able to do is count the consecutive carbons in a row. So start at an endpoint. Don't start at a middle. You want to be at an endpoint. So maybe I'll start here and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I don't think that's right. I think there's going to be more if I go down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's not as good. Five, six, seven, that's not as good. I think the one that I found here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is my longest chain for my parent. So I'm gonna go ahead and number those in green. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This would be no name. That's the parent name. Now there are other substituents around that, right? So when we're looking at those other substituents, that's where we're going to start numbering those and identifying. Here's one carbon. Here's a two carbon chain. Here's another two carbon chain. And here's another two carbon chain, right? All right, with naming substituents. Now, substituent names will always be very similar to the parent. The only difference is the substituents will have the ending YL. So when we're looking at naming of those substituents, um, a couple of things to, to consider. Let's just do a long straight chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. 
And then let's just put some things off. There. All right, so let me number or highlight my parent chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Parent name, Decane. That's my parent. Now, naming of the substituents. Naming of substituents is going to be anything else that hasn't been numbered yet, hasn't been highlighted. So we have this group with two carbons. We have this group with three carbons and this group with one carbon. So in naming of substituents, we want to name them very similarly. Take the number of carbons and add the YL ending. So two carbons, F, Il, ethyl. Three carbons in a row, prop, ol. One carbon, meth, ill. So being able to look at those substituents now, after I've located the parent and I've located the substituents and named everything, all of the carbons should be highlighted. That's what we want to be able to see. And how we differentiate substituents from the parents, the parents get the ending A and E, the substituents get the ending YL. If the group comes off in a chain in a very nice row, one, two, three, that's our typical um, propyl group. Same thing with butyl, one, two, three, four, butyl. It's when we actually have the change or a branch in that continuous line. So being the parent right here, this would be any other group, whether it's a cyclic structure or just a longer chain. If you have this branch of three carbons where the second carbon is attached to the parent, this is what we call isopropyl. Now when we see isopropyl, um, that is the common name for that group. You can use the, the systematic name 1-methyl-ethyl. There is one um, carbon attached to an ethyl group. Um, but I like just memorizing that name isopropyl. There's only four to remember. Now again, if we have that idea of four carbons, where one, two, three, four, the parent is attached to the second carbon, sec, butyl, sec for second, one, two, three, four, it looks like the same idea as the isopropyl here, just branched off at carbon two, um, that is the isobutyl, and one, two, three, four, I call this one looking like the chicken foot, it's a tert butyl group. So putting it all together, the last step was locate the substituents. So I'm going to do another structure here. There we go. And I'm going to start by saying, okay, the ring, the five carbon ring is my parent. That is my cyclopentane. I have a couple of substituents. I have a methyl, a methyl and an ethyl. Now I have to locate the substituents with a number system. How do I actually number them? I try to find the numbering system that results in the lowest number possible, right? Lowest number possible for simplicity, being able to find that lowest number possible so that I can truly understand um, and communicate where my, um, where my um, substituents are. So in a ring, I like to start off with rings because you can really start anywhere in the ring. But if you want to find the lowest number possible, you're going to start counting where you see substituents. I could start here and go one, two, three, four. That's one way. That would be a one and a full four. I could do one, two, three. That would be better, right? And then four, five. But here with this numbering system, starting with the ethyl, I'd have a one for the ethyl and a three, three for my methyls. 
1, 3, and 3 is not as good as a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This numbering system would say 1 methyl, 1 methyl, 3 ethyl. See how we're giving more 1s? A 1, 1, 3 is better than the 1, 3, 3. Yeah? So, now we got to put it all together. If I have two substituents that are the exact same name, my methyls, I get to call it a 1, 1, di methyl. The di, tri, tetra, if you have a tetra, you wouldn't, it would probably either be di or tri, and those are the only ones you do. Um, so when you do assemble this complete name, we have a 1,1-dimethyl, and we have a 3-ethyl, and we have a cyclopentane. We're going to write the substituents first. To assemble the name, we want to write our substituents. So we put the number and the name of each substituent before the parent chain in alphabetical order. The prefix used in di, tri, tetra, um, if multiple substituents are identical, um, are ignored when alphabetizing. So the real thing that I want to use to alphabetize is my M for methyl, my E for ethyl. So when assembly, start with the substituents. One dash or three dash ethyl. One comma one. Di methyl. Alphabetical order. E comes before M. I need both the numbers of 1 because even though it seems redundant, it will work to help identify that there are two methyls and they're on the same carbon. Cyclopentane. Notice how this is all one word. We put dashes in between numbers and letters, and we put commas in between numbers. So identifying the parent, identify and name the substituents, number the parent chain to assign a carbon to each substituent, and make sure that it's the lowest number possible for those substituents. Try out all the areas that you can see. And then list the numbered substituents before the parent name in alphabetical order. We ignore di, tri, tetras, pen, pentas, things like that. Excellent.